the summer, I set off in search of my roots. After significant research and digging, I was able to uncover a wealth of information about my 10th great-grandfather, Jonathan Rathbun. Finding documents and names on Ancestry.com, though, was not enough for me, so I decided to set out onto Block Island and retrace my family's first steps in the New World. John Rathbone was baptized March 8, 1629 at Farnworth Chapel in Lancashire, England. His father was Thomas Rathbone, a shoemaker in the town of Dighton, 11 miles east of Liverpool on the Mersey River. Young Jonathan most likely worked as a shoemaker's apprentice, and in the 1650s he married Margaret Akers, the daughter of Thomas Akers, a neighbor in Dighton. This was a period of great unrest in England. Years of civil war ended in 1653 with the beheading of Charles II and the installation of Cromwell as Lord Protector. In 1654, Thomas Rathbone, the shoemaker, died. He left a small sum of money to his youngest son, Jonathan, who apparently used the money to take his bride to America, which was already developing a reputation as a land of opportunity. They first settled in Dorchester, Massachusetts. John Rathbun's name first appears in American records on August 17, 1660, when he was listed among 12 Massachusetts men who met at the Roxbury home of Dr. John Alcock to consider the purchase of Block Island, 12 miles off the coast of what is now Rhode Island. Alcock proposed that 16 families could share in the purchase and establish a plantation on the island. The 12 men at the meeting agreed to the purchase and to send a surveyor to the island. The group expanded to 16, later reassembled and made plans to divide the 6,720 acre island. Several less affluent men pooled their funds and bought half shares on the island. Among the latter were John Rathbone and Edward Voss. Their land in the southern section of the island lay on the southeastern coast encompassing what is now known as the Mohican Bluffs. That together with their lot in the northern track gave them, they thought, 420 acres on the island. Within a few years, Rathbone realized that the original survey had been inaccurate. He obtained a second survey, which established that he and Voss had been shorted by 130 acres in their great lot in the southeast corner. To make up for the shortage, Rathbone was given 60 acres near the center of the island, stretching from near what is now the town center to the ocean on the east side. That surveying error proved to be a bonanza, for the correction gave him a strategically located piece of land in what became the most valuable portion of the island. Rathbun must have been a man of foresight. For the next few years, he steadily increased his holdings on the island. In 1674, he purchased 42 acres, and in 1680, he bought 12 and a half adjoining acres. On October 10, 1680, he made the final payment for his share of the original purchase. Jonathan also maintained a home in Newport, and was a proprietor of the town wharf. In 1685, John Rathbone was a member of the Crown Party, which supported King James' order, vacating the Rhode Island Colonial Charter, and uniting the colony with Massachusetts Bay, New Plymouth, New Hampshire, and Maine. A majority of the General Assembly voted to defy the King and continue operations under the old charter. Rathbone and 12 other delegates sent a petition to King James, pledging their allegiance to the crown. Rathbone was rewarded for his loyalty, and in 1688 was appointed as Grand Juryman on the General Quarter Sessions Court, which replaced the General Assembly as the governing body of the colony. That same year, however, saw the overthrow of King James and the Glorious Revolution. The crown party was out of favor, and Rathbone returned to Block Island his political career cut short. Less than a century later, his descendants would be fighting a later king in the American Revolution.